Good morning, traders. Welcome to this week's Elite Wave Forex and Cryptocurrency Market Analysis Webinar. I hope you all had a great week. Compliments of the new year to you all. It is my first weekly outlook for the year. You were with Sandile last week. My name is Victor Manena, and I'll be taking you through the trading waves weekly outlook for this year. So if you remember last year, we ended the year with a review of how 22, uh, 2022 played out and how we forecasted the market from the beginning of the year all the way through out to the end of the year, taking you through the strategy on how we forecast the market using the Elliott Wave principle. And I'm going to be showing you some of the charts that we looked at in December and in January of 2022. Now, we are starting the new year. We're already going to, we're going to be uh, uh, taking the same approach where we forecast the market for the whole year. So the rest of the year is just execution, execution, execution of the analysis that we've, we would already be done in January. So our members already have some of the long-term analysis for the year. Um, so that is how we approach the market. Don't forget to check out our chart of the week on our website. You will find here under resources. This is Trading Dash Web's website. Under resources, you will find our chart of the week. We have not updated it from the last year. This chart has been playing out from December. So this was our Christmas gift to you all. Uh, so this was pound yen from last year. I'm going to go through. I'm going to be going through it uh, through the trade recaps. This was a chart from last year, pound yen, where we said this is going to drop and indeed has dropped from around 169, 170, exactly as we have forecasted to about 160, which is where we are right now. Just go and look at your chart there. If I just show you the chart, that was our gift to you uh, in December. We gave you a lot of charts actually in December. I'm going to be going through those shortly. Let's just have a look here at pound yen. I will show you this in detail under the uh, trade recaps of some of the charts we left you with in December. All right. So if you remember, this was the chart that we left you with here on pound yen, where we said that this is going to drop from here. Look at this. Focus there. Just check here. I just want to show you the number there. That was 169. We said this was going to drop all the way down to 160, right? So we've dropped to around 160. So that is a thousand pips altogether, even if we dropped a little bit more. We're currently pulling back here now. Where to next for the yen pairs? Now, I want to refer you back to our YouTube channel. This is uh, the video that we did 5th to 10th December. It must have been the second last video of the year where the theme was, just have a look at this here. Look at the theme here. Look at the thumbnail, what we said here. Something is brewing in the market. Yen and gold will give direction. Okay, what did we mean by that? So yen and gold was going to give us direction. We knew that the yen pairs are going to drop and gold was going to push to the upside. Let's go through these charts. Um, let's go through these charts and I'm going to show you just now before I show you the contact details. Let's have a look at how we forecasted the market and how the, uh, it has played out. I'm just going to pull back some of the charts that we analyzed that, that, that were pushed, published for our members in December on the yen pairs because we understood that the yen pairs we're going to drop and gold was going to push to the upside. And that was the theme for that video. Yen and gold to give us direction. So let's have a look here. So first, let's start with a pound yen that we showed you weekly outlook, gave you this chart, analyzed it and showed that that was going to be the drop. How did that one play out? There was yen, uh, pound yen. Look at that. Easy 1,400 pips, 1,400 pips uh, from December up to currently uh, on January 22nd today. Those are the pips that we left you with. And all the yen pairs, they had to follow suit. Look at this one, New Zealand yen. New Zealand yen, we were looking for this one to drop as well before pushing to the upside. But this is where the hour, one hour charts that we left you with in December. This was on the 16th of December, just before we closed. Look at that. We were looking for this to continue the drop. How did that play out? Let's have a look at that. We are still continuing as we have always been doing in the last year. We forecast the market in the last week. Uh, we go through how the market has played out in the last Last week, current status and the look outlook for the uh, coming week. So have a look at this one. New Zealand yen. 
632 pips, one of those uh, festive gifts that we left you with last year. Audi, yeah, and look at that. We're looking for this one to drop. How did that one play out? Another 536 pips. So the yen we're just giving uh, last year. So that was your gift. Uh, another one, euro yen. We expected euro yen from around 147 uh, to drop, as you can see here. We've then come down to this level here from 147, exactly down here, 867 pips on euro yen. So these were all charts from December. So this was December 16th, all posted on the same day for our members. It was spoiled for choice, Euro Yen. That is how we played out 867 pips. And this one was a US Dollar Yen. So if, if you remember US Dollar Yen from the very same video, we actually uh, focused that it was going to reverse around here from 151. But this was a second bite at the cherry. Uh, around 147, 148, looking for this to continue the drop. And uh, indeed, during the festive uh, season up until now, we have experienced a 2,154 drop on uh, yen, US dollar yen. Right, so more yen pairs, CAD yen. How much, how much, how much was that? Uh, just expecting the drop. That's how easy it is when you understand the direction. That is the power of wave theory. Look at this one 1,427 uh, pips on CAD yen alone in just a single month. Audi yen. So uh, now this is Audi New Zealand. We'll go through the rest of the charts uh, shortly, but Audi yen, we wanted it to just make a pull back around 950 area, which has already happened. We have got that to around 950 area exactly in the blue box. We're starting the drop. Where to next? Watch out for the. Uh, analysis as we start in a bit all right so if you like what we do guys so just go to any of our videos if you go to any of our videos and go to uh show more under the description of the videos um any of the videos so this is an ad sorry guys this is an ad all right so if you go to any of our videos uh you will find the contact details there are the contact details that's my mobile number that's our mobile numbers uh you can use those uh, to make your inquiries our website is trading-waves.com that's our website trading-waves.com where am i looking at that uh this there there we go that's the website and then our trading view link to follow us you can do that and then uh, you we also have the two social media pages that you can follow us and watch our content and all of these posts uh you can check it on twitter and facebook just follow those links all right so watch out for the timestamps we will upload the timestamps so that you can uh, just watch only those charts that you are interested in all right let's uh, carry on so guys if you like our cont uh, contact uh, please uh, like the video subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and hit that bell notification button so that uh, the next time we upload a video you get a notification share the videos so that uh, many people can also uh, get to see this analysis and get assistance with their trading all right so let's get right into the analysis for this week you've seen the recap from december up to date now where to next for the uh rest of this week so let's have a look here pound yen so pound yen We'll be looking for just a pullback. I'm on the one hour chart here. I'm just gonna go to the four hour chart. So look out for continuation to the downside, but when do you get that continuation? So you need to have that timing and execution. So that is where our indicator, we use a special indicator uh, to execute this trade. Remember, this is where we executed here. This is where the drop started, a 1,400 pip drop. So we, I'm not saying that this is where you're executing. So you must have a strategy to enter here. So we are seeing a pullback here. We're expecting this to still continue to the downside in the coming sessions. But this is not a trade setup. We wait for a trade setup. So that is a pound yen. All right, so let's have a look at, uh, we start with, with the DXY. So Euro US dollar. Let's start with the DXY and the Euro US dollar. What is next for you? The DXY and Euro US dollar. Last year, if you remember what we said of the Euro US dollar, we said that it should start pulling back, okay? We should start pulling back uh, to the upside. Let me just go to the website and the resources. Uh, you're not gonna see the chart from uh, January last year. Uh, you're gonna see the latest chart here. But what we are essentially anticipating from the US dollar pairs is a pullback. We are currently bullish, but we want to see a pullback. Let me just show you a uh, Euro, Euro, Euro US dollar and what we're anticipating. The move to the upside that has started towards the end of the last year on the US dollar pairs uh, seems to be impulsive, but needs to correct now. So let's have a look at Euro US dollar. 
the theme will be the same. So let me just show you the four hour here. We're expecting a pullback. The pullback may not exactly happen at current levels, okay? We'll be watching confirmation of those pullbacks, but what we are essentially are expecting is that we start having pullbacks, as I was uh, indicating. We've had an impulsive move to the upside. We're expecting pullbacks across the US dollar pairs. All right, so that is the US dollar yen. So if you remember on the weekly chart on Euro US dollar, we forecasted that this was gonna drop from here. We forecasted this almost 2000 pips, that it was gonna pull back here. Watch out the video that I did last year towards the end of the year, focused, showing that we focused this from here to the downside here and making a move to the upside. And this is a weekly chart, guys. This is not a small move. This is a big move. Okay, so let's just have a look here. So the move here was from 1.5, 1.15, all the way down to parity at about 950, which we focused And then you can just see that on the video from uh, December. Okay, why do you need to watch videos of trades that have already played? And I know most of you are just looking for analysis to trade in the next week. But if you want to learn and have some knowledge, uh, you can watch the previous videos and compare with your analysis but as i keep saying our course is comprehensive helps you to look at the market the same way we do so if you want to learn this properly they, we do this in a scientific way there is science to behind the method that we use to trade this is not just random something that is googled this we have studied from Elliot's books himself okay so this is not google work uh, it is not something that we've just uh, found on the internet we've studied we've read and this is scientific all right so this is euro us dollar we're expecting a pullback it's not going to happen exactly at this point but when it happens we'll see the pullback and then it should continue to the upside Further, all right. So that is the theme for the rest of the US dollar pairs. Obviously, DXY is the inverse of the Euro US dollar, and it has also come down with an impulsive move. Expect a three wave pullback. This is one, two, three, four, five, but we'll be expecting a three wave pullback. Does not happen, have to happen at current levels. Let's see how that plays out. So, that is the theme for this year. So Pound US dollar, I want to go back to the very same video on a pound US dollar in December, what we said of pound US dollar. Uh, let's see if we can still see it clearly. I hope I've got the right video open here. Let's have a look. Excuse the ad there. Right. So. Uh, Sorry, guys, I've got the wrong video. But uh, essentially, what I wanted to show you was the move on pound US dollar that we focused on the weekly and uh, how it's playing out now. But you can just go and refer back to the videos uh, in, in December. So pound US dollar was a very nice move. Now, remember, you look look at this one here. This is the structure that we had on pound, uh, on pound US dollar. And you'll see there are similarities to this with a pound yen. Pound yen or rather pound US dollar is leading pound yen in terms of the structure. Okay, what do I mean by that? We focused this pound US dollar way back around 2021, 2020 uh, and 2019 that this was gonna make a flat correction and drop for this pip. So this is a weekly chart. I'm just gonna show you how far that was. So if we go to our all our videos, see this 3,000 pips that we focused here and that it was going to make a pullback. So we focused three moves. Okay, the one, two, and the three. Now, what, ha what happens next? So we are expecting a pullback all round. We're expecting a pullback, okay? We're expecting a pullback here. Whether it's going to be sideways or it's going to be a, uh, a corrective one, a more corrective one like that, doesn't really matter. But we'll be watching for that to pull back. And then after that, we should continue to the upside. So the theme for US dollar pairs is continuation to the upside. But first, pull back. Right. So that's where we are. As you can see, we have got five waves here. This looks like a, um, a running flat one, two, three, four, five. Would you see this one push, continue push a little bit higher? Then we're going to start seeing that pullback here uh, in uh, a B, C fashion or W, X, Y fashion. This is one, two, three, four, and then we'll be looking for this one to be a five. Continues to push to the upside, pullback before continuation to the upside on pound US dollar. US dollar cat. Okay, US dollar cat should continue to push to the downside. So if you look at this one here, we've got what looks like a structure here one, two, three, 
one, two, is it's gonna be a three uh, to the downside here, pulls back here. There's a possibility we can make this structure before continuation to the downside. So we can have this one as a W, X, Y corrective structure before continuation to the upside, okay? But for now, this should come down and retest this level. We should see this one come retest that level. We've got a three wave pullback there. We'll be looking for this one to come at least take that low over there. That is just like carry just like chief. Also still looking bearish. We should see continuation to the downside. There is no indication of a reversal. We've got this three wave pullback here. I expect this to continue to the downside in the next coming session. Uh, last year, we saw this one build this structure. Okay, so we've continued to the downside. Where is it time for this one to start making the pullback? Okay, so the theme here is we're going to see slight push to the downside, slight push to the upside on the euro, downside on the US dollar, slight push before we get those pullbacks. So the pullbacks are not going to happen immediately. We wait for those confirmations. All right, so Audi US dollar, you can see we have made an expanding flat here. We're still going to see a bit more upside here with this expanding flat. We should see this retest the top here before any pullback. That is the Audi US dollar. So Audi US dollar looking pretty impulsive as well. This is also looking like a one, two, three, this one is a four and a five, okay? So that is a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Is this the fifth wave here? Okay, so you can see here internally here, you've got one, two, three, four. We could be looking for the last piece of the five year before we start getting the pullback here on Audi US dollar. But uh, essentially, we're just looking for continuation to the upside on Audi US dollar. And then that is the same with uh, New Zealand US dollar also an impulsive move to the upside, as you can see. But what does that mean? Is that a five wave structure to the upside? Looks like we've started here with what looks like a, a diagonal, a leading diagonal, where you've got here a wave, a wave one in a diagonal format, one, two, three, four. We could be pushing up here for the wave five before we push back in. You can see that the, all these charts are talking to each other and that they are correlated. So what we're expecting on all the US dollar pairs is consistent across all the pairs. All right, so now this one is uh, US dollar SA. We've already seen US dollar ZAR push down like with a passing move here, but we are seeing this corrective structure that looks like a running flat. Now that running flat should see US dollar ZAR continue to the downside around those levels. Okay, a bit of strength here to all the you set up. Right, uh, we've already talked about the yen pairs on the recap. So essentially with the yen pairs, you're just looking for continuation to the downside. This is US dollar yen, nothing else that we're expecting than to get entries now. Just because I'm saying they're going to the downside, don't go and sell this. You need to have an entry strategy. You need to know where to put your stop, where to take your profits. At this stage, we're looking for this one to continue to the downside. Whether we get a pullback uh, or not, that will be what we will be looking at in the next week. So pound yen, we've already talked so much about this one. Expect continuation to the downside, one, two, three, pull back. We'll be looking for this to continue to the downside. Those are the yen pairs. We've gone through all the yen pairs. Uh, pound chief, pull back, expect a pull back and continuation to the downside across all the yen pairs. So I'm not gonna go through them again. New Zealand yen, we've already gone through New Zealand yen as well as Audi yen. All of them, we are just looking for structures that will give us entries to sell. But so far, we don't have any entry as yet. So just be, don't do not have formal fear of missing out and just go and sell this. Otherwise, you're gonna lose money when they pull back. You don't know how far they will pull back. Whether your account can sustain that. Okay. So let's have a look here. That is Audi yen, Euro yen. Same. We've already gone through this one. Trade recaps. Let's move straight to gold. Now, gold, back to uh, the video that I'm referring to here from last year, yen and gold, gold and yen to give dry direction. Something is brewing in the market. We could see the indicator was telling us that something was going to change. Gold was going to push to the upside. Yen was going to drop. Okay, so this was the video from 5 to 10 December. May, do yourself a favor and watch that video. It's going to help you a lot to see uh, the power of the wave of a wave analysis. Now, gold, let's have a look at gold. What did we see on gold? So gold, what we saw here was this. Okay, if you remember what we said last time, we said gold is going to see new all-time highs. New all-time highs and was going to see even 2,000. I mentioned that in that video. Okay, so that's when gold was still around here. 
That's because we had seen this structure. Even if you go back to around uh, 2021, November, around October 2021, that's two years ago almost, you'll see we've been forecasting this structure. I'm going to try and find a video from two years back where we were forecasting exactly how this structure was going to play out the way it has. And I'm going to show you how this, how we see this one here. So last month, we said this is going to continue to push to the upside. And we are going to see 2,000. We're going to see new all-time highs. And we are indeed uh, on our way there. So you may get a pullback, but that will just be exactly that, a pullback and nothing else. But gold should continue to push to the upside. And again, should continue to drop. That makes a lot of sense. So when we say something is brewing, we can see the technicals are saying something. The fundamentals will just follow what the technicals are already showing us. So it's like a leading indicator. Instead of following fundamentals, we follow the technicals because they tell us ahead of time how the market is going to react because the market reacts reacts to um, reacts to the charts and not just the fundamentals. All right, so let's have a look here. That was gold, continue to, continuation to the upside in that structure. Similarly, silver, if I go to a daily chart, silver should continue to push to the upside. It's got a nice pullback here. If you remember, we saw this one here giving us this nice three-wave structure here, three waves there, a nice WXY corrective structure on silver WXY and a continuation to the upside. This is an impulsive move. We may see silver come back around this level before pushing to the upside. I won't do anything when I see a pullback here. I will wait for an indication to continue pushing to the upside. Okay, so that is silver. Let's uh, continue with the rest. Now, the next one is platinum. Similarly, platinum has got a nice three-wave structure. Look how perfect these structures are on the daily. Look at this one here, all doing exactly the same. Three waves down, three waves up, and three waves down. Textbook analysis here, one, two, three, and we don't see this uh, uh, in hindsight, this is what we forecasted before and that we expected this to do that. So we wanted this one to pull back and upside. Look at for that on platinum. Do not just go and buy uh, without having a clear strategy. Right, brand crude oil should continue to push to the upside slightly in the coming sessions. Whether it has ended the move to the downside will depend on this. So this is how, what the, these are the two things that we're looking at on a brand crude oil. Look at this big structure here. So the big structure that we're looking at here on brand crude oil is that we're looking at this one as an impulse. This one is a corrective structure and this one as the long wave C. If this is a long wave C, that means this is going to make a reversal and we continue to with this, we continue with this ABC corrective structure or the move to the downside has started. If the move to the downside has started, we are going to see the lowest levels that we have seen in oil in history. That will all depend on this structure in validating the structure that I've just shown you. If the structure is a pullback like this, we are going to see the lowest levels of oil that we have seen in the longest in the long in the longest time. So let's have a look here. What do I mean by that? Let me show you just one clue of what I mean by that. But that has got a condition. So I'm gonna go to the monthly chart here. It seems oil may have already started a big move to the downside, but that will all depend on this structure being invalidated. This structure here. The structure here that is playing out needs to be invalidated because that can still continue and go break the top here. But what do I mean by that? So you can find that oil may be looking to come down to this level. I won't tell you why I'm saying that it can come down to this level. Uh, you will see, I will show you next, next time after maybe two weeks after we've confirmed whether we are going to go all the way down. But even if we do go all the way down, we will see the highest levels of oil that we've seen in a long time. So it's all in the charts. It's all in the charts. Very interesting structures that we're seeing there, but all dependent here. But the indicator will tell us what happens here. Whether we drop all the way down here to the lowest levels or whether we continue to push up here. So that will be the answer that we're looking at. Okay, so let's continue. Pound pairs are straightforward, guys. I'm just going to tell you one thing about pound pairs. Pound pairs, short term, medium term, bullish. All right? That's how we're approaching the pound pest. So I'm not going to say much about pound pest, except that short term, medium term, we're looking for pound pest to be bullish. This is pound Audi. So if you're looking for this one here, you can see that we've made a three-wave structure here. You can see that this looks like it's going down. If it's going down, you leave it. 
gives you an entry structure, uh, 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 an, an entry opportunity, you look to take that. Obviously, like I keep saying, you need to have a strategy. Just because I've drawn a line here doesn't mean you get here, you buy. There is a strategy that we use. There's an indicator that we use that tells us if there's confirmation for that. But essentially what we're looking at, we're looking for this corrective structure. After the impulse, this is a one, two, three. That's an ABC corrective structure, flat correction, classic case of a flat correction, ABC on pound, Audi, pound, New Zealand. It's interesting that pound, New Zealand is not following the pound, Audi structure. Pound, New Zealand is still showing weakness. We are seeing a three-wave pullback here on pound, New Zealand. Still going to show, uh, continue to the downside on pound, New Zealand. So that may have an influence on pound, Audi, because we expect the two to be, uh, to be uh, correlated, all right? Pound cat, so pound cat has also made what looks like a five wave move. So currently, like I said, theme for the pound pass is medium term bullish. So if you see this coming down here, just in the, just make note that that is just a short term and we are looking for medium term for pound pass to be bullish as we've been saying since last year. Pound chief as well on the four hour, medium term, we expect them to be bullish. So expect this one, this is a five wave structure here. Any pull back here, we should see this continue to the upside. Okay, so let's go to the euros, same. So the euros, there is a likelihood that the Euro CAD builds this structure here. You've got one, two, three, one, two, three. If this one drops impassively here, you've got a clear classic case of an ABC flat correction, regular flat correction before pushing to the upside again. Right, so that is a Euro Euro Audi will be similar as well. Let's have a look at Euro Audi. Euro Audi, interestingly, is not exactly correlated to Euro CAD. So let's have a look at this one here. Pullback here. We're looking for Euro CAD, or rather Euro Audi, to be continuing to the downside to around these levels to at least take this low here with this A, B, C. A lot of uh, A, B, C corrective structures and not W, X, Y uh, in this uh, charts this week. But let's see how that's playing out. Euro Chief continues to push to the upside. Okay. So Euro Chief, look for this one to just keep giving you, it may not necessarily give you opportunities here, but there's actually not a trade setup here. But what we're looking at here is that this will be an impulsive move. This is a three wave structure and we get another impulsive move. And that will be an A again, B, C corrective structures. The charts have been impulsive. I don't know if it has got to do with the, the first move that we've seen uh, during the festive season. All right, so that is, uh, those are the Euro pairs. Euro pound, interesting structure. Okay, interesting structure on Euro pound. So Euro pound is showing us downside. Okay, it's a clear case of a move like this. You've got here an impulsive move to the downside. You've got a three wave pull back on a Euro pound. We'll be looking for any entries for this to continue pushing to the downside. This makes sense that Euro pound is looking downside because we are saying that the pound pairs are looking upside. All right, Euro New Zealand should follow uh, pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand is not following Audi New Zealand. So we may see this one uh, show some signs of bearishness to around this level. Then we'll be looking for it to build this structure. Okay, so that is Euro New Zealand, not a clear structure for now. We want to see a little bit more data on that. Out in New Zealand, you've seen this one during trade recaps. We were expected a pullback in three, but it looks like those that pullback has happened in five. So let's see if we can have another pullback and continuation to the downside like that. Uh, the crosses, I'm not going to dwell so much on the crosses. So as you can see here, we've got a pulsing moves here. This is an impulse. Expect a pullback. Nothing goes up in a straight line. We'll be expecting a pullback across uh, the crosses. Okay, excuse the part. Right, so that is uh, what we have there. Look, that's what we have there. All right. All right. Right, so that's uh, the crosses. I'm going to go straight into the indices. So indices are interesting here. Uh, we need to confirm. So if we, let, let me just do a recap of what we're expecting of the indices. Uh, if you look at this structure here, we have got a corrective structure here. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three. So initially we expected that after those three waves, we are going to see the indices continue to push to the upside, but that has not happened. But instead we're seeing what looks like currently a running flat. Will that running flat turn into an expanding flat? And we've got that, and then we've got this again. So we are still in those two structures. There's two, still two ways in which those two structures can play out. 
Okay, so let's watch out and see if we're still gonna have this structure continuing to play out here to make a flat and then we'll look for downside again. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the S&P 500. All right, so the NASDAQ will be similar as well. So it looks like the NASDAQ as well. Let me just put it on the daily. Uh, makes it easy for to look at. So the NASDAQ as well, we're looking for this one to have made what looks like a five-way move to the downside. So we are looking here at one, two, three. Could this be, let me just show, show you here. Could this be an expanding flat there? We've made a one, two, three up. I hope you can see this clearly. Could we get another one, two, three to around that level first before we get another move to the downside, another chunk uh, to the downside? So let's let's wait for a bit more data on the indices, not as clear. Right, so NASDAQ as, not the NASDAQ, DAX. So the DAX expectation here, the forecast was that we have got this move to the downside, impulsive one, and we're expecting the NASDAQ to do this, that, and make a move to the downside for another leg up higher structure that made sense so that we can get this but we have broken up here can it still come down and may and give us this this structure it does not have to if it doesn't it just means that we're looking at the structure differently which will be one two three and that this will be a three wave zigzag and we've already started with the move to the upside where we can continue to get these moves but we we're gonna get that confirmation as the market moves all right so that is the darks Let's uh, look at uh, uh, which one is next here, the Nikkei. Nikkei, starting to get messy, the Nikkei, but I'm going to keep reminding you of the structure that I've been looking at almost the whole of last year on the Nikkei. So the Nikkei, we've been looking at it as follows. Look at this one here. It's still one, two, three. Could this be now making a bigger flat correction here one two three up one two three down we can still get another pulsing move to the upside that will make this one an a a b and a c and if that is the case that means the nikkei may still push to the upside and give us this structure let's uh, look at what the structure will look like that will be your a b c flat correction and you can still get another leg to the downside like this on the Nikkei. So this structure is on the daily, as you can see, it's been building from 2021 up to date and it has not moved anywhere. So let's see, will it move this year? Will we see the Nikkei break out of this structure this year at least? Let's see, we'll be watching that very closely. Okay, right, so that is the Nikkei and the Nifty. So the Nifty has been pushing to the upside since last year, since it broke out of this structure. So since it broke out of this structure, one, excuse the purple there, one, two. So we saw it break out of that structure, making this corrective structure, which we focused as well. If you look at the previous videos, will it make a continuation to the upside? Let's see. Either that or we see the Nikkei does something like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, comes and retests the low. We get this structure here. That will be an ABC corrective structure as well before continuing to the upside. All right. Number of ways that this can, how this can play out. Right, now let's have a look at the cryptocurrencies. Very interesting structures that we're seeing on the cryptocurrencies. We have posted a video last year asking the question, has the cryptocurrencies or are the cryptocurrencies reversing or are they correcting? That is a good question and we'll be watching that very closely. But what we are seeing here with the cryptocurrencies, let's have a look at Bitcoin first, is that we are building these bigger corrective structures, almost long-term corrective structures. We are here as far as Bitcoin is concerned. We can still play out this expanding flat. Now, two ways in which this one can play out. It's either, I'm going to draw this one with purple, it's either Bitcoin is playing out this smaller corrective structure here, where we're going to see another one move to the downside before pushing to the upside, or we have reached the end of that move, and this is going to make a push to the upside. Either way, whether we are reversing here, we should at least see Bitcoin get back to around 48, 50,000 levels, at least if this is the reversal. Does not mean that we're going to see the new all-time highs, but we should at least see the 44 or 48,000 to 50,000 levels. Okay, looking at this ABC corrective structure here on Bitcoin. Now, the, the theme is the same across all the cryptocurrencies, so uh, like Bitcoin, you'll see that Ethereum is also building a structure here at the bottom. So this is the structure here, one, two, three. But uh, will it get back to around 2,400? Very likely that we can get to around 2,400, 2,800. And uh, in 
trying to build this bigger corrective structure there. And if that is not that structure is not building up, we're going to see this one continue to the downside. But for now, we should see around 2,400 on Ethereum. Uh, Litecoin. Litecoin similar, but Litecoin looks a bit impulsive. Litecoin it looks like it's even starting here with a diagonal. So you could be seeing a diagonal, and the diagonal means it's a it's a it's a motive wave. If it's a motive wave, it will correct and continue to the upside. Okay, so let's just keep an eye. It's still a messy structure, but uh, all bullish. Even the long term uh, charts, the weeklies, the dailies are showing that uh, signs of reversal, but we have not really confirmed that as yet. Ripple. Ripple also looking upside here has made a three wave move to the upside has made a three wave move to the downside. Will we see Ripple test at least the 0 0.60 area and build this structure? Okay, so we'll be watching for this structure. Don't worry so much about them reversing when reaching this level because it could just be the reversal and we're starting to see upside. But for now, we're looking for this to go at least back to around these levels. All right, so that's all I have for you for this week, guys. Uh, wishing you all the best for this year. Hope you make some money. And if you are not making money or you are at least not consistent, you can look to join our course. All our details will be on our website. You can check out our options there uh, on the website. Now, again, if you have not already subscribed to our channel, please hit that button bell notification or rather please hit that subscribe button and if you want to get a notification every time we upload a video hit that bell notification button and we appreciate your thumbs up so you can hit that like button on our videos have a great week everybody cheers bye, -bye.